The defining difference of what I do versus what a web developer does is user research. That's what makes it actual research, that's what makes it publishable research, and we've published papers on MAVO already. We need to verify that novices can actually use this language to create web applications. We have the vision that web application development should not be restricted just to developers, just to professional developers. There are also other days when I do CSS spec editing and are more involved in my work on the CSS working group. But there are also days that I travel around the world and speak at conferences, um, and that's quite a fun part of what I do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please welcome to the stage, Leah Varou. <laughs> Queen of CSS, here she is, Leah Baru. When I was working at WMBC, I had to use more gradients to sell it's not perceptually uniform. The story actually starts in the 90s in Greece, and specifically in the island of Lesbos, which I guess makes me geographically lesbian. Probably the first you've ever seen. Seriously, that's what lesbian means. It means a person from Lesbos. But I had never used a computer until I was 10. When I was 10, we, we went to Athens to visit my uncle that worked at Microsoft at the time, Microsoft alas, and he had a Windows 95 computer at his place. And at the time, Windows 95 was the pinnacle of technology. It had just come out. Windows 95 is so easy, even a talk show host can figure it out. I basically spent the entire time we were there uh, poking around in that, in that computer and using like all the apps that were there, uh, Microsoft Paint and like all those kinds of things. Parents at the time were not that concerned about screen time because screen time is basically what made me who I am. I would come back from school and code all day, pretty much. I would only leave the computer f to do homework and sleep. Uh, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was my day. And that's how I got into my teens. And at some point, when I was 16, I mean, I was a huge geek. So I had a terrible social life. Especially in the small town that I lived. Like, I grew up in a, in a small Greek town of 2,000 people. It was very, very small, very closed-minded, you, you could even say. Uh, so I was bullied a lot. I was like the kid that every other kid at school made fun of. Like, everybody at school knew who I was but not in a good way. I was just the kid that you made fun of. And at some point I thought, what can I do to fix this? Maybe it's the programming. Maybe that's why boys are not into me and I can't get a boyfriend. It's because I'm, I'm too much into programming. Boys don't like girls who are into programming, I thought at the time. So I forced myself to stop doing it. It did not work, as you might imagine. I ended up picking up other geeky pursuits like mathematics or mobile phones because I guess you can never escape who you are. So around 2012 I was interviewing with uh, various tech companies and 
W3C was also starting this project called Web Platform and they were looking for a person to do developer relations and maybe a little bit of light front-end development on webplatform.org. It seemed to be a good fit, so I was hired. I was very excited to be working at W3C because it was it's a consortium founded by Tim Berners-Lee who invented the web, but my role ended up being more of a front-end developer role and less of a standards person job. So after a year, I ended up leaving so I could focus on working more on specification. My mother went to MIT in the 70s. She was one of the very few women. She went for a PhD. She, d she ended up doing a master's and then left for personal reasons. And I, I always found this very inspirational. I grew up hearing about MIT, how intellectually stimulating her research there was. So I always wanted to do research myself. But I said, you know, there's time. I'm young. I'm having fun now. I can do it later. And her death made me realize that you don't always have more time. One day you wake up and it's too late. For my mom, 2013 was too late. She always wanted to go back and finish her PhD, even, even when it wasn't realistic. I mean, realistically, she would not really go back at 60 and finish it, but you know, she always had this dream. I realized that if I really want this, I should actually make a move. In that year, I put my application together, I applied, and surprisingly, I got in. I didn't expect I would get in, but everybody at MIT thought they wouldn't get in. And the other change that her death made to my life and my career was that I really wanted to do something here in her memory. Um, and I thought it would be so great if I would dedicate a book to her. Thousands of developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.